Alan Pardew alongside Graham Souness. Between the two of you, you've uh, managed quite a number of clubs. On occasion, you've been to the same club. Of course, Newcastle United uh, being one of them. Southampton being another, actually. Alan, when I look at the list, Reading, West Ham, Charlton, Southampton, Newcastle, Palace, West Brom, Den Haag, CSKA, Sofia, Aris. So West Ham, are their fans any more difficult than others to please? No, I don't think so. I, but it's a passionate place, and and they're passionate about um, not not just uh, some sort of success, hopefully down the road, but to play in a certain style and manner. And I think um, that is a pressure that you must understand when you're a West Ham manager. When I was went there, I think I was only the tenth manager they'd ever had, or something. It was ridiculous. They've always had quite st- stability there, you know, yeah. in terms of the managers and. Uh, you know, um, that was brought home to me by a lot of the players who have played there and the people I spoke to, you know, you've got to play a certain way here, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, oh, OK. And Graham would tell you, the only way to play as a manager is to win. That's the only way you got, you've got to learn how to win. There's no good playing all sorts of great, pretty football. You've got to win. And I think the argument at the weekend and Moyes' argument in terms of going into the press was to say, well, I win, you know, don't look at the style factor. Yeah. Look at the fact that I've brought you a trophy and that I win games. And he sits, where do they sit? Ninth. Uh, ninth, you know, yeah. to, uh, like a point behind Newcastle United, uh, who is still regarded perhaps as a European challenger. So, you know, he ain't doing that bad. Well, that's the thing. Um, so they lose at Nottingham Forest Green and some of the West Ham support chanting, you're getting sacked in the morning. Boring, boring, boring West Ham. And Moyes, of course, was on the receiving end of it. But the word win, and you mentioned it there, Alan, that was in Moyes' uh, lips as well. Well, look, I, I'm, I'm a football supporter, I understand. We've, we've been disappointed in the, last, in the last few weeks. But, you know, you mustn't forget the wins at Arsenal and you mustn't forget the wins at Tottenham. We've beaten Chelsea and all the other games have beaten Man United at home. So sometimes the things can be forgotten very quickly. Uh, the expectation at West Ham is that they, they think that they, we should be right up there challenging. <coughs> Let's be fair, I think most people who watch football and are supporters of most clubs who say that West Ham in the main are doing a good job. We have a European game to look forward to. We've been three years in Europe now. So sometimes you have to you have to just consider where we are. Hey, we want to do better. So not just the supporters who want to do better. If anybody thinks for a minute that we aren't hurting and the players aren't hurting well, they're completely wrong. So they're hurting, Graham, mm. but no win for West Ham in 2024. And now we're in mid-February. So, I mean, to an extent, how much can you bask in, in former glory? Well, he's, he's got a bit of credit in the bank. They won a trophy last year. Um, I understand. Listen, when you've got a job at, uh, at a football club, you walk in and you have to deal with the group of players you have. You know, that's exactly... You have to find a way of winning football matches. And then if you're there for a period of time, you get your own style... Remember the word style, your own style of footballer in. And I think the criticism that David David Moyes gets is that hit the players he's bringing in are are play counter attacking football. I don't think they're sitting ninth in the league, but it's 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 how they're doing it. It's you know if you're if you're a football yeah, club yeah. two or three or four years, then you're buying players that you know you want to be bossing games, you want to be on the front foot, you want to play be playing in opposition's half, especially at home. And I just think. Um, West Ham, for a West Ham supporter, it's not terribly enjoyable because you're playing counter-attacking football. You're on the receiving end of um, the other team having the ball all the time, and you're not. Pres- it's not. An, it's not an enjoyable watch. So, so that, I, does that entitle them to say you're getting sacked and the more get, no, get out of the club? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Overall, he's done a good job there, but it's, it's David's style. He, mm. You know, it is perceived as being negative, which is not negative. He's working with a group of players that he thinks the best way of getting a result of them is going this way. But then you fire another argument. If you've been there several years, you're going to then buy players that will take you away from that and then you become more proactive than instead of reactive. Well, the, well, the, 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 the big problem I think David has at the moment is the, win, the window that's just passed because they lost a couple of so-called flair players and brought in Phillips. And Kevin Phillips it just hasn't worked out. Obviously, he got sent off again at the weekend. He's struggling to find himself. He hasn't had no game time. I personally think he's a terrific player. Whether West Ham, it was perfect for him to go to West Ham, I don't know because it's just not working out. Is he a Premier League player? Kevin Phillips? Yeah. Oh, I think so. Why did you say that? 
because I because th- I think he did terrific for England. You know how many games? That's he, for England. England yeah. play Mickey Mouse games most of the time. That's coming. I know. You, you expect a Scotland to say that, but and then not just Scot- England. He, Scotland he, do as well. The teams they play today are, are you know, it's when like the Yugoslavia was dissolved, and you're playing about eight nations from that area now. They're, yeah, I agree. Some of the England games, games, but he also but, had a great. Uh, when when Gavin Phillips no, went to West Ham, did you think it was a good signing, Alan? You're talking about on. We're talking about not going to Man City. Went to Man City first, but obviously yeah, it's a massive but, but move. More yeah. recently, yeah, yeah, he leaves course. City. And he goes, do you think there's one for West Ham? That's a good one. I don't. I, I personally thought at the time it wasn't the right move for West Ham. That in the window, but I still think he's a very, very good player personally. But what you can't, you can't say he's a very good player, but it's the wrong move for West Ham. I'm, I think he's played, and I'm just getting to check. I think he's played 65 games in the Premier League in total. I think it's circa 65. I mean, he didn't get a kick at the ball at, at City. I mean, he, he was at Leeds, comes up, and one season in the Premier League. gets a 69 big, now. 69. Gets, yeah. a, gets a big move to Man City. That's on someone's opinion. They quickly realise, hmm, he's not what we thought we were getting, and they've moved him on. Mm. For me, it's still to prove that he's a top player in, well, in the Premier League. I, but under I, I Moyes, they brought, in, they brought in Kudos, Alvarez, James Ward-Prowse, that seems all right. The Paqueto, uh, the, the Paquette, point I was going to go back to the window, the injury to him it happened more or less when the window was open as well. And that, all these things have com- sort of combined together to run on a difficult run. They're on a difficult run. But all West Ham fans that I know, the displeasure in David is the style and the way they're going about games, that they're not looking to dominate games, which Graham was touching on. Uh, in terms of like getting hold of the game and going at teams and keep going and, and push again and push again. They get the lead, they sit back. And it's that kind of... Would you have them doing that? Well, I, I'm a different style that my sort of team set up to, to David Moyes. But the most important thing for David at the moment is get a win under his belt. Forget about style. He needs to get a win. You know, See, they got a tough game against You can get away with playing like getting results. You can't give yeah. them 6-0. Arsenal beat them. Ma- they, yeah, at home, you absolutely. Can, you know, playing that way and getting beat. That's when the pressure comes. Yeah, I mean, the the, the, the Arsenal game was massively damaging. But they got a tough game. You know, they got Brentford at home on Monday. And Brentford, are, I actually think they're a bigger threat away from home. They're a problem. You know, they've got great pace. They've got Tony, you know, leading the line. So that's not an easy yeah. game. Yeah, You don't turn out with BSC, isn't it? I understand it. I got stick years ago for on Sky questioning. Someone said the West Ham way. I said, I'm not quite sure that the West Ham way is. But I think the modern, the modern way the game has evolved... West Ham are a big football club. That catchment area, when you look at down there, enormous catchment area, great stadium. I think um, you buy a season ticket and you go to watch your team. It was you want, you want to be, be entertained, enjoyable. Okay, mm. you get a wee bit of enjoyment if you if you play counter attacking football and you've won one nil. Yeah, but they they're wanting more than that, and I understand why they want more than that. Mm. And I think David is is not new, new to the game. He must realise what he needs to give them. No, no yeah. matter what happens between now and the end of the season, Alan, it's maybe an unfair question. I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you think Moy stands a chance of getting his contract extended? Well, he's still in the, he's still got the European campaign to come up, and you never know. Football can change. And I remember actually a period last year where Dave was under similar pressure, and then obviously they went on the great one in Europe and got to the final and won it. So I would say the ball is very much in West Ham's court in terms of like, well, are we going to keep David because his contract is up? Remember. But David's still got a decision to make as well. It's a two-way decision. You both got to go, yeah. And David might not feel, mm, okay, maybe it's time to move on. Mm. And I did that at Newcastle. Where I didn't get the sack at Newcastle. I got a move to Crystal Palace because I was like, I don't see this going anywhere, Mike. You know, I sat down with Mike Ashley and said, I just think you're better off going somewhere else, getting a new manager and me moving on. And that was the agreement we come to. Okay. Uh, West Ham fans listening, no doubt, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, but... Uh, it's strangely, I want to hear from some of you who actually will stick with Moyes if, if you do feel like that. Um, give us a call, tell us where your heads are anyway, and we'll, we'll maybe bring a couple of you to air. 03717 Well, we ask for calls, and as always, the calls come in. We're talking about West Ham United. We're talking about the fact that in spite of being ninth and despite of winning a European trophy last season, many West Ham fans still not happy with uh, their team under David Moyes. And of course, 
course, Moyes has now equaled his worst run in charge of the football club with eight games without a win. West Ham have not won in 2024. Graham's making the point, Graham, you stand by it. It's maybe not the fact that they're not winning, it's how they're not winning, it's how they're approaching games that you think is incensing supporters. A negative outlook, is it? Yeah, I think it's, the, it's, it's what, how David plays. You know, the, the Nick results. Yeah. Um, if you, I said, if you're buying a season ticket at West Ham, you want to turn up on a Saturday afternoon and see your team on the front foot, bossing the game, having the most chances of most of the play. Um, they'll accept away from home. I'm not having a lot of the ball and nicking games. But at home, I think they feel it's not the West Ham way. They want their team to have more of the ball, more of the game, more of the chances and some excitement. OK. Um, of course, they, they, they're comfortably in the bottom half for goals conceded 13th, uh, goals expected 14th and possession percentage 16th. So... That, that, that last one's the one that upsets them. Yeah, yeah. Alan Pardew, of course, has managed the football club. Alan, many West Ham fans coming in and, and want to speak. And Simon is one of them. Simon, good morning. Thanks for your call. What do you want to say, mate? Uh, good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's, um, we, we kind of get infuriated as West Ham supporters when um, we're, we're discussed by people outside who don't want to go and watch the club regular. The, it's all highlighted about um, the last eight weeks or the eight weeks before that. The problem with Moyes has been in the last two years um, and it, the disenchantment starting two years ago when we were fault and we were through to the last part of the Europa, and um, he decided to not buy anybody in the window and strengthen. He stuck with Antonio and Westworld, and everyone could see what was going to happen, and it happened. And from there on in, um, he's now got to a position where he's got 15 first 11 players that are contracted for the club, play for the club. Um, he's got rid of five players during the January window and brought in one on loan. And the football that we're playing, the, probably the last bloke on planet Earth that we needed was Calvin Philly, another holding midfield, because that means that we now we play with four. So if you're paying 900 quid or whatever you're paying per year, and you know that you're going to go and watch a team with four holding midfield players yeah. at home to Bournemouth, and you're going to hope that you can hoof it up the middle at some stage and nick one. That's not really valued for money, guys. Not in any way, day or form. So you've had enough, Simon, have you? You've had enough of West Ham under David? I had enough of him two years ago, and I've been consistent in that view. All right, Simon, thanks for that. Here's Gary. Gary, do you echo that? You're a big West Ham fan. I, he's made some good points. After, uh, morning, gents. Morning. Morning. Right. morning. Um, He's made some good points about transfers and I have to believe that letting our two left-wingers go, Ben Rama and Fournals this window and then only bringing in central midfielder. Um, we lost Kerr at centre-back as well, which we don't really seem to have any informed centre-backs at the minute, so that's another problem. I just think the style of football can be boring, yeah, but when it works, it can actually be quite exciting to watch. Perfect example is Brighton away earlier in the season, where we had about twenty odd percent of the ball. Yes. But every single time we went forward, we looked like scoring and won the game three one. Right. Absolutely brilliant. Right. The trouble is, when it doesn't work, there's no plan B. So okay. we're just on the back foot, letting other teams come at us, let them have all the ball. Yeah. There's no fight. There's no passion. There's no real desire and urgency from the team. But when it works, it works. Alan, when it works, it works, according to Gary. Well, you know, I think uh, Simon's points uh, are very much reflected, I would suggest, a majority of West Ham fans. That's the first caller. You know, the fact that uh, the style of play, the, the, the window in particular, that there was some issues with flair players going, Calvin Phillips coming in, uh, Wal Prowse, uh, who's played this deeper role, uh, still sort of playing a deep role. So I get all that. And Gary's right. You know, the way David Moyes plays and the way he sets up his team is very much not possession-based. It's not possession-based. 
it is more kind of countering possession, how to get the best, exploit the situation with teams coming on to you, like the Brighton game, for example, that he's using. Yeah. So, so that is usually what... But, you know, there's all other points to a football match that you've got to account for as well, set plays, which West Ham were very good at, actually. This year, not so, it's not been so one of their strengths. And set plays again. And everything else that comes into the game. Um, but the bottom line here, it, it, when I, and, I, and, I, and I go across uh, to the big rival Spurs, you've got a completely different feeling. And... You know, this pressurised game, high up the pitch, high line. The fans are enjoying it. They're all on side with Ange. They lost at the weekend. Yeah. Probably the first bit of like, oh, is Ange ball over now? No, no, no. But Dave's been through all that. He's been through all the Anges before. You know, but he's always done the same thing, Graham, hasn't he? He's always had the very similar style. Sure. Even at Man United. You, there wasn't a particularly, when he was there, a particularly possession-based team as such. It's just the way... That he sets his team up. Oh, big West Ham fan, finish it for us. It's just the way he sets his team up, says Alan. Hi, Paul. It's just hi, Paul from Colchester speaking. Yes, hi, mate. Paul. What do you want to say? Well, we go to football to be entertained. It's as simple as that. If you <laughs> go back two or, two or three years, we we played Liverpool at home, and that game, the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic. We beat Liverpool three two. Um, and it was a it was a fantastic game. There was a great atmosphere, probably the best atmosphere I've ever known at the London Stadium. And since then, it's just gone very very flat. Um, oh, we haven't seen a decent game of football all year, all season at West Ham. You look at the the results: Palace one one at home, lost one nil uh, to Everton, nil nil against Brighton. You know, we haven't seen a decent game of football. We haven't been entertained, and that is why West Ham fans are getting dis- disgruntled. You know, we had a, a, a good first half of the season, and I think second half of the season, I think we're going to, I wouldn't say we're going to go into free fall, but we, we certainly seem to be in a very, very, you know, poor run of form, and, and we're barely having a shot, shot on goal, and that's what people want to see when they go to a football match. Fair enough. You want to finish it, Graham? Yeah, I just think, you know, the, the stat, when you trot out the stats, yeah. we're six, they're 16th in terms of the amount of possession. Yeah. You know, you spend a hell of a lot of time without the ball. That's for teams that just get promoted. Teams that are, you know, survival mode. Mm. If you're 16th in possession stats, that can be a great watch. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. And, that okay. is, and that is the main issue over at West Ham. You know, that's not a great watch. At that last that last man's caller there, he's talking about a game three years ago. I think it was three years ago against Liverpool. Mm. And he said he's not seen a decent game this season. Yeah. Not yeah. enjoy, he's not enjoyed again. He's not enjoyed again. All right. Season. Well, we accept it. It's a tough old shift if you're a West Ham fan, but you'll stay West Ham fans. Of that, there's no doubt. It's 12 noon. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.